everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to play Our Travels by XYZ Games. XYZ Game Labs was nice enough to send me a free copy of this game to review. First, each player is going to choose a player card. The player cards have slightly different abilities, and you can do this randomly or you can just let people pick their favorite. But if you look over here, these are the action spaces and these are the different abilities. This bag means shopping. The yarn bowl means crafting, so where you make something. And this one means exchange, where you can return yarn of one color from your yarn bowl to get yarn of a different color. This is a special ability where you get to do two different things, and those are different depending on whose card you have. So for example, Eliza's a spinner. So Eliza can take three balls of one color without having to draw any cards or anything for it, which you'll see the mechanics of that in a minute, but she gets to take extra yarn um, when she takes this ability, but she can only craft one item. Amara is a crafter, so if she takes this crafting ability, she can craft four items, where Eliza can only craft two. Theo's a shopper, so Theo gets a bonus when he goes shopping. And Niha is a dyer, so Niha gets a bonus down here where she can craft one item using any colors, but she doesn't get quite as much when she goes shopping. So they're all very balanced, but they have slightly different abilities depending on what type of crafter they are. So pick the one that you want to go with. I'm going to go ahead and go with Niha. Now each of the boards also has two sides, so I could play Niha or Alex, and it's the same abilities. Now each of the player mats has an icon at the top that shows you which player marker goes with it. This is the action marker for Niha. So I'm going to go ahead and take that action marker and later I'll use that to mark which actions I'm taking during my turn. Next, Niha needs some patterns. So here are the stacks of patterns. These are patterns for making a teddy bear, mittens, and a scarf. The patterns all for the teddy bear, for example, all use three of one color, but which color that is varies depending on which tile you pick. So we're going to shuffle all of these and choose one of those randomly. And we'll do that for the mittens and the scarves as well. The mittens are three of two colors and the scarf is four all different colors. Now I've placed those on my board with the colors showing. This side just says three of one color, but this side says specifically three green balls, right? So I'm placing them with the specific colors showing, and these are the patterns I start out with. Now, later during the game, I can become proficient with the pattern to where I don't need to use only green to make a teddy bear. I can make a teddy bear in any color. So then I can flip this over and it becomes an easier to make pattern because I can use any color. But for now, we're sticking with the specific colors that you use for the pattern. Now, notice on your board, you also have two additional patterns. You have the hat, which can be made with any two different colors, and the blanket, which can be made with five of any one color. And that's the same for everybody. Now there's one last thing to do with the individual player setup, and that is to find your character's favorite special project. Niha's favorite special project is a unicorn. And the unicorn, of course, being a rainbow creature, requires one of each color to make it. And it's worth 10 points if I complete this project. So we're going to take that and set it aside for right now, and we do the same player setup with the other players. You also need to grab a yarn bowl to store your yarn in. Now let's create the bazaar. First we need to put together our yarn deck. These are the yarn cards, which all just have various colors of yarn on them. And these are the special event cards, which have special events such as yarn sales, donating yarn to other players, or the dreaded tangled cat, which gets in your way and stops you from crafting. So we're going to take all of these event cards and shuffle them in with all of the yarn cards to create our starting yarn deck. The next thing we need to add to our deck is the special request cards. You have the one that you picked that was your favorite for your character. 
All the other players have one they pick that's their favorite for their character. Now for each character who's playing, you're going to pick another one at random. So if there's two players, you're going to end up with four special request or special order cards. So these are going to get added into the top half of this deck. Cut the deck in half as closely as you can. That was not very close. There we go. That looks fairly close. And then you're going to go ahead and shuffle these cards into the top half of this deck. This next part is where we house rule it a little bit in my house. The reason for putting those special requests, special orders up in the top part of this deck was to make sure they come out early enough in the game that we have a chance to work on them, right? So let's look at what the actual instructions say to do and then I'm gonna tell you where I change it up a little bit. Right now the instructions say to go ahead and put your whole deck up here on the deck spot, which is this upper left hand corner. This is going to be your discard pile down here. But I'm not gonna put it together. I'm gonna to keep my top half separate for now. This is the half where I put all those special orders in, those special projects. So I am gonna go ahead and deal from this top half to fill the bazaar. Now, as you deal, if you come across any of those special requests, like this one, you set it aside for right now and we'll deal with it in a second, okay? So we go ahead and fill this until, and if you come across any event cards, you do the same thing. Go ahead and fill this until there's nothing but yarn showing up here, all right? Now, according to the rules, remember our whole deck is supposedly all together and it says to shuffle this card back into the deck. Now, here's my problem with that. If you shuffle this card back into the deck now, you're going to be shuffling the whole deck. So then what was the point of separating it out into halves to begin with, right? The point was to keep these in the top half of the deck. So I am just going to shuffle this back into the top half of the deck and proceed from there. And then I'll put this top half on top of the rest of the deck. So this is the inventory of our yarn shop. Let's look at some orders that we can fill. These are your project cards and you're going to shuffle them all together. And then based on the number of players you have, you're going to select a certain number of cards off the top. So for two players, I want eight of these. There we go, I have eight cards. Now that's the deck that goes over here. And we're going to fill this part of the market with these cards. So these are orders that you're trying to fill. And as you can see, for example, this card, in order to fill this order, you need to have a scarf and you need to have some mittens. And if you do, you get 15 points for it. Once these project cards run out and there's an empty spot in this project spaces here and you can't fill it with a project card, that triggers the end of the game. The last steps in the setup are to place this game tray where everybody can reach it. This has your finished projects and the yarn that you collect during the game. And to give each player one of these player aids. On one side, it shows what your actions are during your game phase. You take your action phase, which is choosing one of these actions and doing it. Then there's a restock phase where you restock anything that's missing in the market. And then you can take restock actions, which are just actions you can take after restocking. What are those restock actions? Well, they're on the back here. You have three choices that you can do if you want to. You can finish a project. You can learn a pattern, which means to learn one of these so you can flip it over. Or you can frog an item. If you've made a teddy bear and you want to exchange it and get your three balls of yarn back, you can do that. We're all set up and now we're ready to start playing. The purpose of the game is to get yarn, craft items, fill orders, and basically earn points. So let's go ahead and play through a couple of turns so you can see how it works. First, I'm going to take my action marker and decide what action to do. Well, right now I have nothing, so the first thing I need to do is go shopping. So I'm going to put my action marker on this little shopping bag icon to indicate that I am going shopping at the Yarn Bazaar. Now this icon says I can pick up three cards, not three balls of yarn, three cards from the Yarn Bazaar. My teddy bear needs three skeins of green yarn, and if I make a teddy bear, I can work towards filling this project. So I'm going to go ahead and make a teddy bear. I see on the board three places where I can get green yarn. This one just gets me one ball of green yarn. This one gets me one ball of green and one ball of blue yarn. 
that's handy. And this one gets me two balls of any color, which I can pick a green one out of that. So let's go ahead and fill those. For this one, I get one green. So I take a green yarn and I put it in my bowl. For this one, I get one green and one blue. And then for this one, I can choose two of any color. Two of any color, I'm gonna get blue and I'm gonna get the other green that I wanted for my teddy bear. Okay, now I discard these into the discard pile and let's move on to the next game phase. So that was my action phase. Now we're in the restock phase. You're going to refill any open spaces in the yarn bazaar. And if any events or special requests show up, I have to deal with them now. And look at that, a special request showed up as the very first card. So what does it mean when I say I have to deal with this now? Well, the special request, you can decide, do you wanna keep that for yourself? or do you want to give it to your opponent? If you keep it for yourself and you fill it, it's an extra project you can fill and you get you know, the points for it and that's great. It just takes six balls, one of each color. If you keep it and you don't succeed in filling it before the end of the game, you lose those points. So it's important to only take it if you think you can do it. Now this is early in the game, we've just started, so of course I'm gonna take it. If it was late in the game, I might wanna screw my partner by giving it to them. Screw my opponent, sorry. So I'm gonna keep that special request for myself for right now. Let's continue to refill the bazaar. Now my opponent takes their turn and then it comes back to me. Um, so some of these may have gone away by then, etc., etc. But now it comes back to me and I'm going to take another action. I can't go shopping. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna get two more, ball, two more yarn cards from the market and I'm going to be able to craft one item using any colors. So let's get yellow and red. And then I could use blue and purple, but I don't want my opponent getting this because this is just too powerful. He can get two of any color. So I'm gonna take that one. So let's go through these. I get a yellow and a red. And then I can pick two of any color. Well, let's go with the colors I don't have. Let's go orange and purple. Now I do have one of each color. Okay, so I'm gonna discard these and Let's take a look at what I have in my bowl so I can craft. I could craft a teddy bear easily because I can use any color. I could craft any of these items, right? But I wanna save some here to do this project. So if I was to save yarn to do that project, that would be one of each color right there. That leaves me with three balls of yarn. With three balls of yarn, I can do either a teddy bear or the mittens. Um, so why don't I go ahead and do the teddy bear like I was planning, but because of this ability to use any colors, I'm gonna use green, green, and blue. So I turn in my green, green, ah, green, green, and blue, and I'm going to take my teddy bear. So I've made this teddy bear. Now this yarn isn't spent yet, it's still sitting in my yarn bowl. Now the teddy bear all by itself, even if I don't use it to fill an order, is still worth three points. So it's a good thing to hang on to even if I don't fill the order. But for example, um, let's take this one. The teddy bear is worth three points. The blanket is worth five points. So if I had a teddy bear, a teddy bear, and a blanket, that would be worth 11 points. But if I use them to fill this project, that's 25 points. So where you can fill the project, it's definitely worth it point-wise. My next step is to refill the bazaar. And now, oh no, it's an action card. It's the Tangled Cat. So this card is fun because you choose a player and that player cannot take the craft action in their next turn. So I have to resolve this right away. So I'm going to choose my opponent and I'm gonna put the little cute Tangled Cat on their bowl, just like that. And the cat is now playing with their yarn and they are not able to craft anything this turn. Yay! Okay, and then this goes in the discard pile and we take the next card to fill the bazaar. So that was the restock phase. Now we can take restock actions. And remember, these are the restock actions. So let's take two of them. 
let's finish a project, which is I'm going to finish this special project I have by turning in six balls of yarn, one of each color. So now I fill this project and that's going to be worth 10 points at the end of the game. Now let's do the next action, which is learning a pattern. I can turn in any one thing that I've made. So I've made this teddy bear, right? I can turn this in to flip over my matching pattern tile. So let's do that. I'm going to turn this in to flip this over. And now look, it only costs me, instead of costing me three green yarn to make the teddy bear, it costs me three yarn of any one color. So it doesn't matter what color. That makes it so much easier to make teddy bears. So that was learning a pattern. The other action I could have taken, suppose I had a pair of mittens, I could have turned the, these, this pair of mittens back in for two blue yarns and one yellow yarn. Suppose it's sometime later in the game, I have all this yarn with me, and I want to make a blanket, but I don't have five of any one color, right? The one action we haven't looked at yet is this one, which is the exchange action. So if I wanted to get five of one color, I can pick any color out of here and exchange any number of tiles that I want to. So I could exchange one green, or I could exchange both of my green. It can be any one color, but only one color and any number of tiles of that color. So I can exchange two yarn balls in green to get two yarn balls of orange and have, seven, or have five orange balls. And that is my action, but now I have the orange balls and next time on my next turn, I can maybe craft some um, blankets, a blanket. Now let's assume it's some several turns later and I have made two teddy bears and a blanket. I've restocked the bazaar and I'm in that final phase where we are doing restock actions. The restock action I want to take is finishing a project because I want to turn these in to finish this project. So I turn in my two teddy bears and my blanket and I get this project card. And then I refill that space with the top project card. At the end of the game, this is going to be worth 25 points. And then the play goes on to the next player's turn. Now, what if there wasn't any project cards left to fill that space? So it was just like this. We're near the end of the game, and I've taken this card. All the other projects have been claimed, and there's nothing left to fill that space. Well, that is what triggers the end of the game. So then I finish my turn and all the other players get not a full turn, but they get the chance to, in turn order, craft one project using the yarn that they have, one item, so they could craft a teddy bear or some gloves, or they can complete a special project like making the unicorn. But that's it, they can't take the, the actions, they can't get yarn, they can't fill these projects, they can just make items, okay? And then we finish up with scoring. So for scoring, you just add up the, let's suppose I had this, right? You add up the point values on your special projects, on the project cards, and on any items that you haven't turned in yet. You add all those up. So here I would have 35, 38 points from these items, plus five points for completing my favorite project, which makes 43. Then you have to subtract for the yarn that's left in your bowl. For every unused yarn token, you subtract one point. So I had 43 points minus one, two, three, four, five, minus five points. So I have 38 points as my final score. Whoever has the highest score wins, and that is how you play our travels. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching. Plus, plus five, five points, points for completing, completing my, favorite my favorite project, project which, which makes 43. 43. Plus five points for completing my favorite project, which makes 43.